It's like top secret shit. I like how you did that. This is pretty cool. Yeah, as long as there was... And the Minotaur is going to fit in there. Oh yeah, a miniature will fit in the box, right? It's the same lid size. Mm -hmm. This is a prototype. Again, we're, we're probably going to get in real shit trouble when they found out that we're filming this, but the prototype sharpshooter thing. It's going to be released on Chung Channel, so I won't be in trouble for that. But oh. I think they did. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to another Vlog Babble. Now, it's been a while since I've done this, and this is about either wargaming or not wargaming. It's just stuff I want to talk about. And the other thing is uh, Q10. We haven't done that in a while. Let's bring it back. So let's see if uh, a random winner could uh, win something cool. Okay, first things first, I wanted to talk about a really cool charity event that's going on with a bunch of YouTubers. Now, this is uh, led by IDIC Beer, and I always get that wrong, so that's why I have this piece of paper here. He and Blood, Fallen, uh, Blood of the Fallen and uh, Warlords Gaming, another cool channel that I, I watch um, often are uh, running this uh, charity event for Salamander's Army and they're getting a lot of help from a lot of YouTubers uh, to you know build something for this army donate it and they will wrap it off at the end for the uh, help for help for heroes uh, organization and uh, you can find that at uh, helpforheroes.org.uk if you want to you know just check it out but uh, they're doing this whole Salamander Army at the end people purchase tickets for it and then uh, win and uh, the Salamander Army and all the proceeds goes to Help for Heroes. The link's down below, so check it out and try to get involved if you have time uh, to do this. It's for a good cause and uh, it looks like it's going to be a fun project. Next thing I want to talk about is Wargamer Girl's um, Kickstarter for her terrain pieces, the Clockwork uh, Tower and the uh, Obelisk. And those are really cool terrain pieces. Now, there are some people that posted about how much it costs. Now, first of all, <clears throat> just the Obelisk is pretty cheap. Um, the clockwork tower is huge. This thing is that big. It's made out of, you know, resin plastic, I believe that's what Thomas said. So it's not cheap stuff. It's actually really high quality stuff that they're making there. So if you haven't already checked it out, um, she already reached her goal in one day and it's, it's still going. So she might, I believe she said she might put in some um, stretch goals or something like that. I don't know. I'm not sure, but check it out and uh, keep uh, in touch with it. Now Gen Con's over and uh, I think I have like two more videos in the queue. And another two, which is more of a community, you know, uh, interview. Uh, but uh, we'll have those out in a bit. Um, at Gen Con, though, I was able to pick up some really cool stuff, which leads to me to the next project I will be doing and I'll be filming, which is making a modular gaming table. Uh, you guys can't see it right now, but I pretty much got a couple things all set up here for the tiles, which you can tell right now. I'm going to have to fix up some stuff. I'm gluing the tiles right now to uh, the baseboards. And then I'm going to go and film each tile that I make. So what it is going to be a ruined city type of thing, obviously. It's the easiest one to do, at least for me it is. I picked up some really cool stuff at Gen Con at a good deal. I got the new you know, Imperial Bunker as well as a box of walls. And uh, we'll go over that and um, see, you know, plan it all out and stuff. So you guys will be able to see all that. I was talking to the ArmorCast guys. And they, gave, they caught me a bunch of pieces and stuff. So I could show them off in the video. And uh, some other bits and pieces I got from bit stores. You know, the walls from the uh, Shrine of Akul and stuff like that. So lots of really, you know, inspiration and influence from Templar Crusader who uh, does his own boards. I wanted to go and give it a try and see if I could do, you know, a few boards. I'm also going to do a Craft World board, uh, which is using the pieces from uh, Modest Magic's um, uh, uh, Alien World set. Um, it's actually really cool. I'm going to be able to, you know, finish it up, and that's basically how his, you know, terrain works. But more on that later. And some other cool stuff from Gen Con. Uh, finally, got to play a game of X-wing, mainly because Ichiban is into X-wing, and uh, they released a lot of new ships. You guys see this? Look at this. This is the Lambda fighter. Some really cool, you know, stuff I got from uh, Gen Con. Here is the Hawk ship thingy. I'm not sure what. You know, I don't know where that's from. You know, Ichiban keeps telling me it's from the books or whatever. But And then I got the rest of my stuff. Oh, and I got the B-Wings, and then I got the TIE 5 Bomber. The Bomber's really cool. I like that. I got a couple of those, a couple of the B-Wings. And, uh, yeah. So lots of cool things coming with X-Wing. I think um, I'm going to start doing some battle reports on that, too. 
And uh, speaking of battle reports, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing the table is uh, to have a nice table to do battle reports for 40k on as well as other games. So you're going to see a lot of uh, 40k and fantasy battle reports coming along, as well as you know War Machine, uh, Malfo, and all the other games we play. Drops on Commander, Dark Age, tons of games we got on on our shelves here, and uh, you know we're all me and Jay we're all digging through it. So uh, we're going to have a lot of that going on. Uh, another upcoming thing that I will be doing is this. The Tesseract. Um, I haven't been able to crack it yet. You know, once I got it, the Apocalypse rules came out. You know, there was Gen Con and there's all this other stuff I do. But a lot of you guys are especially interested in watching me build this from scratch and then all the way up to the painting part. So I'll go ahead and uh, record that. And that will be another long series. So I think one of the big news that came out is someone cheated in Games Day US. That's like someone submitted an Imperial Flyer. I don't remember what exactly it's called. One first place in the open competition. They found out that he actually did not paint it. So uh, he got disqualified and all the tiers moved up. Now this is the first time I've, I've heard about uh, cheating and painting competition. Uh, apparently it happens often. I remember in SoCal Smackdown last year, um, I was judge of that painting competition. I was notified that someone submitted uh, a model that wasn't painted by him and the guy who actually painted the model actually went to the same competition so I guess he didn't know about it so he's I guess he tried to sneak it in and uh, submit it for the painting competition but it's really odd why people would would go to those lengths to you know cheat in a painting competition and, and figure that they won't you know be found out because painters like I know like you know like I do when I paint I, I take pictures of it I post it all over my you know media stuff and I know most painters do that too and uh, you're, you're going to get found out. So, you know, it's just like, why? Why bother? So that's the Q10. What do you think about cheating and painting competitions? So leave the thoughts and comments down below, and then we'll pick a random winner from it. And let's see, what will we win? Let's, how about a Patriot 105 airbrush? Yeah, let's go big. We haven't brought the Q10 back, so uh, I think I owe it to put a bigger prize in this time around. And that's it, guys. Just quick updates to let you know what's going on. This is Chung from the WGC. Like if you like, sub if you haven't, share where you can, and favorite if you love me. I'll talk to you guys later.